Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Sandra Garigou. Uh, I'm uh, working at uh, Institut Paris Region as a project manager on uh, adaptation to uh, climate change. Um, I work in the climate energy uh, department and uh, this morning I will uh, animate this uh, webinar with my colleague uh, Francisca. Uh, could you introduce yourself please, Francisca? Yes, thank you, Sandra. So um, my name is Franziska Barnhusen and uh, yeah, I'm a, as Sandra said, I'm a colleague um, of hers at the um, Regional Energy and Climate Agency of the Ile de France region. Um, and uh, yeah, also working on the issues of uh, adaptation as well as on the um, issues of uh, building energy retrofit. Uh, and so we will be presenting um, both of us uh, today uh, in this webinar. So uh, welcome and thank you so much for um, connecting with us today. Thank you, Francesca. Um, so this uh, webinar is uh, organized in a framework of a uh, European project, Horizon 2020, uh, called Energy Watch. Um, the introduction um, uh, allows, allows us to present you some, uh, uh, f to say a few words about Energy Watch, but um, um, Sabina have uh, has already uh, done uh, this uh, this uh, presentation, so uh, I go on on this uh, on this uh, presentation. Uh, just uh, a few words regarding the adaptation uh, module. Uh, regarding this uh, this uh, module, uh, we pay uh, attention to treat the creation on data, but also to share uh, notions and uh, concepts and vocabulary. And finally, the same vision of what is adaptation regards the framework of IPCC. Uh, for us, it's very important to uh, share this uh, element before we can talk about uh, uh, data and uh, indicators. We will do uh, both the same. Uh, uh, the, the, we will discuss about this, uh, these elements. Who is participating today? Uh, this uh, illustration reflects how many participants of each part of the world are attending today, and uh, not only uh, European uh, area. So uh, welcome to this uh, to this uh, webinar. And um, and uh, we would like uh, to do some. Um, um, interactive question. Um, we we present you some uh, illustration. You can see uh, eight uh, pictures, and uh, we propose you to select one, uh, which represents for you uh, your view of the adaptation uh, today. Now we can uh, we can start uh, this uh, learning course and the first uh, sequence uh, is about the fundamentals of climate change uh, adaptation and um, we um, we would like uh, to share uh, uh, some slides uh, representing the markers of uh, climate change uh, representing the main message about this uh, climate change first of all uh, the greenhouse gas emissions continue to uh, increase and uh, we uh, observe an uh, intensification of emission accumulation in the uh, atmosphere. Uh, this is a structural problem regarding the latency time of the uh, greenhouse uh, gas. The uh, IPCC uh, report explains the consequences of the increase of this uh, greenhouse gas. The scientists uh, note a global average temperature increase of 1.1 degree since the second half of the 19th century. Um, they organize five uh, scenarios in order uh, to link uh, the volume of the concentration of this uh, greenhouse gas with the level of the global um, average temperature and the uh, incurred impacts. To detail uh, this uh, incurred impacts, the scientists organize five groups of reasons for concerns. 
in the worst uh, scenario, the what one the eight point five, the extreme uh, events could be more uh, important and more uh, frequent. We can uh, observe uh, inside the range uh, of the objective of Paris uh, Agreement, 1.5 degree and 2 uh, degree, uh, that the impacts could be different in their intensity, even in this uh, range of the uh, objectives. That's why each additional uh, fraction of uh, warming counts. And that's why the climate stakes requires articulated answers, mitigation, and uh, adaptation solutions. The level of the ambition of uh, mitigation ans answers can condition uh, the needs uh, of uh, adaptation for uh, uh, the territories. Um, what uh, the scientists observe uh, also it's uh, approximately 3.3 to 3.6 billion people uh, already live in contexts that are highly vulnerable to the consequences of climate change. And this uh, vulnerability uh, results from an overlap of challenges, including highly climate sensitive livelihoods, high levels uh, of poverty, lack of financing and accountability, lack of access to basic services and the infrastru infrastructure like health, sanitation and water. Global warming has already uh, caused damage to ecosystem and some of it uh, are irreversible. Um, the intensification of warm extremes is causing tree mortality, forest debug and the degradation of warm water corals. This damage is aggravated by no climatic factors as pollution, artificialization, and over exploitation. The scientists of IPCC develop interactive maps, and it's very in, in, um, a good, uh, uh, interesting illustration to understand what happened in this uh, with the climate change. These maps represent different uh, climate parameters like hot extreme or agricultural draw or EV precipi precipitation and confirm the human contribution on their occurrence. We see some elements regarding uh, the observation regarding the past. Now in the future, uh, the scientists uh, note that all regions are expecting to uh, experience change in at least five climatic impact drivers. These impact uh, driver in drivers are representing on the right on this slide. Uh, for example, you have the extreme heat, uh, mean precipitation, uh, fire weather, and uh, so on. We can wonder on the capacities of a region a territory to cope with this event, especially when they occur simultaneous, for example, a draw and, um, and a heat wave. So this is uh, some uh, projections uh, for, uh, for uh, all territories. The scientists defined a fundamental notion uh, this is the key risk, the key climate risk. Um, this uh, key risk uh, represents an interaction between climate uh, relative hazard with the exposure and vulnerability of the affected human or ecological system. For Europe, the scientists define four key risks due to heat, uh, draw, uh, water scarcity and uh, flooding and sea level uh, rise. Um, this is an important uh, message uh, in uh, right in this uh, in this uh, slide. Uh, we say that the climate uh, stake requires articulated answers, mitigation and adaptation, because we have 
to stay within the limits of uh, capacity to cope with this accelerating pace of climate change. For example, uh, the nature-based solution are important answers to adaptation and also mitigation, but the ecosystem services depend on the good health of this ecosystem, now vul vulnerab vulnerable with this uh, climate change. And an example uh, for uh, the France, uh, a global warming um, equivalent to 2 uh, degree, 2.3 degree, um, correspond to a temperature increase of 3.5 uh, degree. So the change could be very, uh, the amplitude could be very different uh, uh, between, uh, between uh, territories and uh, region. Now um, we suggest you to uh, to share some slides about the concept and the notion of uh, adaptation. The adaptation is uh, defined as a process of adjustment to actual or expected uh, climate and its effects. A key word uh, is process. Uh, we need different steps to develop an adaptation strategy. It takes time. Uh, we, um, and uh, another key word is adjustment. The adaptation, adaptation aims a change, but uh, you can consider different intensity of change, an incremental and a, or a transformational uh, adaptation. Um, to understand, to better understand this, uh, to grasp, uh, to grasp this uh, notion, uh, we present to you an uh, illustration in uh, agriculture. Uh, the incremental adaptation or uh, adaptation actions, where the central aim is to maintain the essence and um, integrity of a system or process at a given scale. In, agric in agriculture. The incremental adaptation will not change uh, practices or crops. The action will concern, for example, uh, the uh, sowing date. The transformational adaptation is adaptation that changes the fundamental attributes of a system uh, in response to climate change and uh, its effects. And uh, for example, in agriculture, we will see uh, new production or uh, relocation. Considering the trends of the climate change, uh, the scientists um, um, emphasize uh, the need of transformational adaptation and we need to prepare it. Um, Regarding the adaptation, uh, we consider that uh, that we could be adaptation could be characterized by three main notions: uh, the notion of territory, the notion of adaptive management, and the notion of holistic and systematic approach. Um, this notion impact decision process, public policies, stakeholder involving, and uh, values uh, sharing. Regarding the notion of territory, uh, the development of uh, solutions need to be as close as possible to the social, socio-economic specificities of the territories where the stake lie. The notion of territory reflects the notion of competence linked to the organization and local authorities where the actions are legitimate. At the level of the local authority, you have a better understanding of stakeholders and actors' interaction, and you need these uh, elements to establish a strategy and uh, uh, an action plan. Um, this is an illustration of the skills linked to different scales. And the uh, supra scale uh, can be considered as the scale where strategy, uh, thinking, mobilization of financial means and financial uh, circuits are organized. 
the local level is considered the most appropriate for uh, action because at the local scales, uh, public policies cover a wide range of themes, uh, subjects which are linked to adaptation. The issues are the articulation of these different scales uh, regarding the rhythm, the temporality, uh, the need uh, to coordination between elected officials, uh, maybe the rivalry between uh, territories. We can see that adaptation is also a question of attract attractivity of the uh, territory. The second notion is about adaptive uh, management. Uh, finally, um, because with the adaptation, we you have to manage a certainty. Um, the uncertainty could be uh, related to the global climate change scenario. Uh, are we to uh, two degree or four degree increase? Uh, we don't know. Um, the responses of major cycles, ecosystem, and uh, societies uh, are also component of uh, uncertainty regarding their uh, uh, changes, the, um, this uh, evolution. So. Um, to cope with this uh, uncertainty, uh, we need to uh, adapt, uh, uh, adopt adaptive management in order to uh, adjust approaches in response to this uh, observation. Uh, that means that uh, public policies have to integrate this new um, uh, way to uh, manage or conduct uh, a project. Uh, as we see, is not. Uh, um, um, easy uh, for uh, to change uh, the way we can uh, conduct uh, this uh, the, the project. Um, the last uh, notion we would like to share with you is the notion of uh, holistic and uh, systemic approach. Um, the adaptation cover many domains at different scales, uh, governance, infrastructure, environment planning, health and water, and the adaptation uh, strategy need to integrate this global vision in order to optimize the solutions. Moreover, some uh, climatic impacts emphasize interdependencies, for example, between the energy network and the uh, transport. The question of holistic and systematic approach allows us to introduce the question of uh, maladaptation and uh, Francisca uh, takes the lead for the, the next of the presentation. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Sandra. So I think um, it uh, seemed important for us to um, yeah, talk a little bit about the, the concept of maladaptation um, because it is um, yeah really uh, one of the big risks uh, in uh, an adaptation strategy that basically we see that measures uh, that were initially taken to have um, a beneficial uh, effects uh, to better adapt the territory to uh, the effects of climate change can also have some uh, negative uh, direct or indirect impacts which are have not were not necessarily taken into account. Uh, when the strategy was um, was being developed. So this is something quite important to uh, have in mind when uh, you are starting to work uh, on these topics. Uh, so maybe to come back to um, the definition that is given of maladaptation by the IPCC. Um, uh, this is all kinds of um, measures uh, that uh, uh, have a risk of increasing um, adverse climate related consequences. Uh, and so um, that can uh, concern um, different types of problems. So um, on the one hand, to um, have a negative impact on uh, mitigation uh, of climate change. So instead of reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions might uh, increase greenhouse uh, gas emissions, which could be the case, for example, for very uh, carbon intensive infrastructures, which may actually uh, yeah, have a negative impact on um, um, uh, on the the greenhouse gas emissions of the of the territory, uh, it is also um, uh, the fact of uh, increasing or displacing 
uh, the vulner vulnerability to climate change, so to maybe reducing the vulnerability vulnerability on one territory but increasing it on another, or um, uh, decreasing it uh, for a short period of time, but then in the long term uh, still uh, uh, increasing uh, the uh, vulnerability of, of, of the territory. Um, and then there is also a socioeconomic um, dimension to this, which is basically to make sure that the measures that are taken will not result in more uh, inequitable outcomes uh, for the population, so that they do not um, increase socioeconomic inequalities, for example, that that are already present on on the uh, on the territory. And so, which is uh, quite important, I think, is that um, we also see that most of the times maladaptation is an unintended consequence. So, like I said, it is a result of actions uh, that were um, initially uh, planned to help and to have positive impacts, uh, and which did not uh, work out as as planned. Um, and so we see here that there are uh, different types of um, of maladaptation that maybe we can um, uh, split in three different categories, um, uh, with some of them being really uh, more top-down approaches, so that there is a um, a plan uh, planned actions that are um, developed by. Um, uh, a public authority, uh, and then on the other hand, you also have a more um, bottom-up approach, uh, one could say, with uh, more spontaneous uh, reactions that are taken by the population in absence, most of the time, of uh, actions implemented by uh, the public authority. Uh, so here you have the examples of uh, uh, infrastructural maladaptation, which is basically this idea of cre um, creating um, important, often uh, grey types of infrastructure, such as seawalls, uh, which will protect from certain risks, such as the uh, sea level rises, um, but which can also um, either be um, badly planned, so that they are not adapted to uh, the actual risks uh, that the territory is facing, um, and can also have a, a negative impact on, on giving a false sense of security, so that uh, development will continue um, in uh, in a certain territory, and then at some point uh, when the uh, amplitude of the changes uh, get more and more important, uh, the the infrastructure may then uh, break, and then a lot of people uh, will be very impacted uh, from this. Uh, it's a similar concept with the example that we give for institutional adaptation. Uh, so the fact of again uh, kind of maintaining um, an activity, uh, which is very um, uh, which is very vulnerable uh, to climate risks through financial compensation, for example, how uh, like you can have come some kind of climate insurances for agriculture, for housing, and which will uh, finally slow uh, more transformational changes uh, that would uh, help make the um, the agricultural activities, for example, more uh, more resilient uh, to uh, to the climate changes. And then finally, uh, the last example uh, that we wanted to give you was more on uh, so more spontaneous with a behavioral maladaptation, um, with uh, I guess the most um, uh, common example will be that of. Um, of air conditioning, so that uh, when heat waves get uh, more and more frequent, well, more and more people will spontaneously um, install uh, air conditioning in uh, their houses, and which will then again have a, a negative effect both on greenhouse gas emissions as well as on um, as on urban heat. Uh, but uh, we can think of other examples, for example, types of spontaneous migrations um, away from areas affected by climate change, or also uh, a change in 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 the crops that are, are cultivated, which uh, could potentially have a negative impacts if uh, there's not any um, planning around uh, these changes, which will result in in uh, in people, for example, in agriculture, uh, losing um, income uh, because of these very um, more chaotic, uh, spontaneous transformations, which are which are taken in reaction to uh, to the increased climate pressure. And so uh, next slide, please, uh, Sandra. Thank you. Um, and so basically, um, uh, when we take these different examples, we can see that uh, different types of uh, adaptation actions uh, will carry a different uh, degree of risk uh, for a maladaptive, um, maladaptive outcome. Uh, and so more uh, kind of what we would say more soft actions, which are more about raising awareness, capacity building, uh, improving um, uh, processes and, and planning. 
those are typically more or less these kind of win-win actions, uh, which have a very low risk of uh, negative outcomes because uh, in general they can be um, uh, applied and implemented in, in a very equitable fashion. They do not uh, need a lot of uh, means. They're not emissions uh, intensive. Um, and so these are, are actions which are relatively easy uh, to, uh, to be implemented. Uh, and then we in, uh, we have actions which um, aim at uh, decreasing sensitivity. So then again, through um, infrastructure um, or through changes in development plans, et cetera, et cetera, or even decreasing exposure. So going right up to even resettling entire communities uh, there, uh, we will have uh, a bigger risk of uh, maladaptive outcomes because often these actions are very um, uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission intensive. Um, they are very costly and uh, they will often have a negative socioeconomic impacts on uh, the populations which are concerned. Um, now, this doesn't mean, uh, of course, uh, that the only adaptation actions that we should take are these kind of soft um, actions uh, aiming at increasing adaptive capacity. Um, on the contrary, often reducing exposure to climate risks uh, will be an unavoidable measure in the medium or long term uh, in order to go towards the kind of transformative adaptation uh, of the territory, as uh, Sandra presented it um, just before. Uh, but it's just to, uh, to show that these are um, a kind of high risk actions. Uh, and so the, the risks have to be anticipated in the planning phase in order to limit, uh, try to identify the potential and desirable effects and to, to limit them accordingly. Um, and yeah, to finish on this concept, maybe just the, the next slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, basically this diagram is um, uh, just to show you that often we are not on, uh, it's not black and white with this. Um, but it's usually a, a range between um, are we um, in a spectrum of maladaptation or an effective adaptation? It is often not so easy uh, to to say where exactly you are situated on this range, um, which is also uh, linked to the difficulty of evaluating uh, the actual effects uh, that the adaptation measures are having. And so often it will be something more in the middle that um, maybe some of the, the measures taken will have some positive um, effects that were originally planned, but will also have some negative um, effects that were not anticipated before. Uh, and so we will uh, present you afterwards um, what are the different uh, things to have in mind when evaluating uh, an adaptation strategy in order to try to limit uh, these risks of, of maladaptation.